So, not long ago, I unboxed eight motherboards from MSI, and I promised you guys that I will do an unboxing video. And, well, here we are. We have here eight different boards from MSI for the latest and greatest Z590 chipset from Intel, ranging from budget all the way to extreme high-end enthusiast level. So typically in my videos, I like to start off from the small and low end things and move my way up to the high end. But I thought for this particular video, we can flip that around and start from the high end. So with that said, let's start off with the Z590 Godlike. If the name doesn't already tell you that it means business, then maybe the gigantic box will. The Z590 Godlike goes for $1,000. And for that price, I'm honestly expecting all the features plus a nice pelvic massage, if you catch my drift. So when you first open the box, you are greeted with a bunch of extra accessories on the top layer. In addition to the four M.2 SSD slots that the board comes with, you also have the option of adding two more using the M.2 Expander Z, giving you a total of six. The Expander also comes with an additional three pin, five volt RGB header, which is nice. Moving on to the second layer is where you will find the motherboard and some more accessories, like these plastic covers. These are used to cover up the cables to further enhance the aesthetics of the motherboard. You're essentially adding an entire armor kit to the board. You also get a DIY stand set, which you can use to make your very own test bench. And I gotta say, this was one hell of a difficult test bench to set up. I spent 30 minutes trying to figure it out and I just gave up. I would much rather spend the extra money and get a real test bench than this sorry excuse for one. It's nice to see that they included six braided SATA cables and two mini display port cables. There's also a collectible dock tag with the MSI Dragon logo, but my favorite accessory has to be the remote that gives you easy access to power on and off your system, along with a dedicated clear CMOS button right on it. You basically connect this to your motherboard's J- connector on the bottom using the provided cable. This will give you convenient access for those hard to reach buttons often located on the rear IO of your motherboard. So instead of reaching to the back to press those buttons, you can just use the remote. Probably the most useful thing I've seen inside a motherboard box, aside from the SATA cables, if I'm being honest. All right, let's talk about the board itself. First off, this is one good looking board. For some reason, I'm actually digging the reflective mirrored aesthetic. But it's not just looks you are paying for. You are buying an enthusiast level board, so expect high quality components. You get 20 direct phases, titanium chokes, and dual 8-pin EPS connectors on an 8-layer PCB with 2-ounce thickened copper. For connectivity, you get a nice selection of USB 3 ports and USB Type-C, which are also Thunderbolt 4 compatible. This means you get up to 40 gigabytes per second transfer speeds and support for 8K displays. I also like how the RGB lighting isn't overdone. The only noticeable area is on that small triangle where the chipset is. The IO cover also has RGB, but it has this dark tint over it, so it's more subtle. And I just think it fits the theme of the board a lot better. Another really cool feature of the Z590 Godlike is the dynamic dashboard too. You get this really cool, colorful OLED panel that indicates the status of your board. It's also got a built-in debug function with tons of useful information. Plus, you can even customize your profile to show off your personality. If I were to use this board inside of a PC build, I would most likely do a custom loop with chrome tubing and chrome fittings. I think this will look amazing in it. For the very few ballers out there, the less than 1% enthusiast gamers looking for the best of the best with all the bells and whistles without any compromise, regardless of the price, then this is a board you should definitely consider. The next step down is the Meg Z590 Ace. While it's only half the price of the Godlike, it's still enough to make a grown man cry. You can also expect less accessories, as you will only get the essentials, like four SATA cables, the Wi-Fi extender, and two new items they include with their high-end boards, like a screwdriver set and a portable dusting pen. Just like the Godlike, the Z590 also has an eight-layer PCB design with titanium chokes, but it's only got 16 phases of power instead of 20. You also get the same dual 8-pin EPS connectors and four M.2 slots, but no expander. We got this beautiful brushed aluminum, all black color scheme, which is perfect for all color neutral PC builds. And it even has subtle RGB lighting from the chipset cover and the IO cover as well. The dedicated power and reset buttons are nice for easy troubleshooting and testing, but the board also has the same J- connector as the Godlike. Meaning if you have another remote, you can plug it into this motherboard as well and have convenient access to power and reset along with clearing CMOS. 
I don't know if MSI sells these remotes separately, but that would be a really useful thing to purchase. Otherwise, you still have access to the clear CMOS and flash BIOS button near the back, along with the same amount of ports as the Godlike, except two of the ports are USB 2 instead of 3. If you don't mind sacrificing a bunch of extra accessories and some additional features from the Godlike, then I think this board would be a much better buy in terms of value when comparing it strictly to the Godlike. If you're somewhat still a baller and you're looking for a high-end enthusiast level motherboard to do a high-end build, maybe even a custom water cool system, then this board should definitely be on your list. All right guys, we're finally getting into the mainstream motherboards. This is the Z590 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi. Inside the box, you'll get the Wi-Fi extender, four SATA cables, and the portable duster that we've seen with the uh, previous motherboards. So this board goes for 350 bucks, but still packs all the features you would want from an enthusiast level motherboard, like dual eight pin EPS connectors, a six plus one plus one power design with digital PWM. One of the things that stood out to me from this board is the heatsink design. It has this really cool 3D look. With the carbon Wi-Fi, you also get three M.2 SSD slots instead of four, and you have one less USB-C in the back. But they did add one extra USB 3 port, so you get four USB 2s and five USB 3s. Really, the only huge difference between this and the Ace is the design, the slightly lower quality components, and one less M.2 SSD slot. It even has the same RGB lighting. So honestly, if you like carbon fiber and you want to save 150 bucks, I'd go with this board instead. All right, so these next three boards are practically identical in terms of features and what you get inside the box, which also makes sense because they all have the same box design. The Gaming Force has a rather unusual color scheme. I'm getting these retro vibes and personally, I don't see many builds out there with this color scheme. So already it's shooting itself in its face. The Gaming Edge Wi-Fi on the other hand is a more attractive looking board for the same price and it has Wi-Fi while the Gaming Force does not. So I'm really confused as to why these are both priced the same. And then we have the MPG Z590 Gaming Plus, which is the next step down. For $50 less, you lose most of the RGB lighting, but still keep the same features. You still get two 8-pin EPS connectors, three M.2 slots, and the same connectivity. All right, guys, we're finally getting into the budget boards. Who's still with me? Probably lost over 90% of the audience at this point. So this is the MAG Z590 Torpedo. It goes for $240. You don't get any extra fancy features or accessories, but you still get your three M.2 SSD slots, pretty decent VRM heat sinks, and an eight plus four APS connector. I also found out that this board has an extra four pin RGB header like the other two boards, and an extra ethernet port for 2.5G plus gigabit LAN support. I can't say I'm a huge fan of the color scheme. Again, we got this unique two-tone colors with the gunmetal gray and light blue, which I don't think will look great in a lot of builds. But I guess MSI was going for something different with this board. And finally, we got the Z590A Pro, the board for peasants. I'm just kidding. This board is perfect for entry level and even mainstream gamers as it has all the necessary features you would need for a gaming and streaming PC. It might not be the prettiest one, that's for sure, but it will get the job done. And for a lot of people out there on a budget, that's all they're really looking for in a motherboard. You get an 8 plus 4 pin EPS connector, 3 M.2 slots, and 7 USB ports. While the board might not have any RGB lighting, it does feature 3 RGB headers allowing you to plug in additional RGB products. The design of the board kind of reminds me of the Great Gatsby with all of those lines, but at least it's color neutral. And besides, most of the board will be covered by the graphics card, so it's not going to be noticeable inside your case. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the unboxing video. Again, a huge thanks to MSI for sending all of these out. Of course, I'll drop a link below to all the motherboards if you guys want to check it out. And if you enjoyed the video, maybe consider tossing a like before heading out as it does help out the channel a ton. And maybe let me know in the comment section which of these motherboards was your favorite. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.